Um, so this is um, my turn of presenting the, uh, the project we're doing within the Maria de Maestu uh, with a few of the people of my lab. Um, and the title, which is uh, like most of the titles of the project, is a very preliminary one, but uh, Machine Learning Approaches for Structuring Large uh, Sound and Music Collections. Uh, I will first uh, motivate a little bit uh, uh, this project. And this project relates, as the title says, uh, with uh, sound and music collections and software. So I will introduce uh, the, the collections and the, the data sets that uh, we are developing and using. I will present uh, briefly also uh, some of the software uh, that we are developing and using. And then I will uh, talk about the specific uh, uh, topics that we are working on, uh, which is uh, genre classification and auto-tagging, and uh, uh, more recently uh, related with uh, using deep learning uh, for uh, learning uh, some aspects of uh, this uh, automatic uh, labeling. And I will end with some conclusions. OK, so about uh, motivation. Um, well, uh, I think it's uh, the title. It's, it's clear is uh, the need to uh, to facilitate the annotation of large audio and music collections, in order that uh, we can facilitate the access to audio content. Um, so there is a lot of uh, uh, audio and music out there, but uh, of course the the bigger uh, the biggest issue is the the lack of. Uh, proper structuring of it. And uh, the concept of structuring, of course, we can go into uh, uh, quite complex aspects of a structuring and go to ontological type of, uh, of organization of uh, these collections. We are not aiming uh, some, we, we have some other projects that uh, work in that direction. In here, uh, the aim is not to go that far. We just want to have good labels into uh, the audio content in order then we can build systems to find them. And the concept of uh, labels that we want to add automatically, if it's not added manually, are uh, things like this. In music, a, a typical type of labels is what genre of music it is, or what instrument is being played, or what is the musical key, or what is the mood, etc. And there is a number of uh, known uh, semantic categories uh, that are useful uh, for facilitating the discovery of uh, uh, the content. The current known problems that uh, everyone in the, in the community uh, agrees on uh, are uh, these ones. The first one is uh, the, the lack of uh, large, audio collection, uh, large audio collection for training and testing. And uh, we could uh, say that even the, like, really even the big companies, even the big companies in, in, uh, in music distribution like Spotify or Pandora, they have still the same problem. They have large audio collections, uh, but uh, the metadata that they have is not uh, sufficient for developing a number of the services they want. They may have the editorial metadata, like who is the artist or uh, who is the musician playing, but they will not have uh, some of these other metadata that is also very relevant for uh, uh, facilitating the discovery or the recommendation or some of these services that they offer. So this is uh, uh, a problem uh, clearly for, for research, uh, but uh, even in the, in the commercial world. Uh, the other uh, issue is that, okay, um, in, uh, in, in we are talking about audio and uh, we're talking about uh, music uh, content and um, the features that we start from, um, and that's a, a very long uh, research uh, um, sort of task that has been going on for a, a long time. Uh, so there has been quite a lot of progress of uh, trying to get features uh, automatically from the audio content or audio content plus other type of uh, uh, information we might have in order to have uh, 
good features on which then we can do some machine learning or some uh, uh, processing to, to, to get uh, these semantic concepts. And uh, really, uh, we are still far from having adequate and robust audio features for many of the use cases or many of the content that uh, we want to, to label. And uh, finally, um, uh, the, the, there is the problem of scalability. Uh, we, are, uh, we want to really work with uh, large data collections and that means also with a large number of classes. If you look at the state of the art in uh, MIR and when they do classification tasks, the, the number of classes they use is really small compared with the real world thing. So for typically, if you want to have a, to label an instrument or label a, a genre, they, they work with, uh, let's say, 10 to 20 classes as, a, as, a, as sort of the typical type of number of classes and with data sets that are on the hundreds or maximum a few thousand uh, uh, instances of, uh, and, and for each class they have uh, very few. And that's not the reality. The reality, if you go to, to Spotify or you go to any, uh, uh, any type of large collection, we are talking about thousands of uh, genres that are relevant or uh, hundreds uh, of uh, different types of musical instruments, etc. And current techniques are, uh, are definitely far from being scalable to this, uh, this uh, situation. Okay, so the project basically is to advance on these three uh, type of problems. There may be some other problems, but we are really focusing on these three. And uh, the team that um, uh, is working on this, uh, so I, I had uh, within the music technology group, um, my lab is the audio signal processing lab and we work on these and related problems. The people that are more directly related to uh, this particular project is of course myself and uh, Jordi Pons uh, who, is, uh, who is his first year PhD student and he's in fact the only one funded by Maria de Maestu to work on this but clearly the project is bigger than this so we have like uh, Frederic Pons who is uh, uh, who did his PhD related with free sound and it's uh, any, um, so he's uh, working on that area and uh, Dimitri he's working on the the, the feature extraction and on, on the Cynthia library and Alistair who is working on the acoustic brains framework that I will also mention about uh, but very much this project is very uh, uh, sort of interlinked into uh, a number of the, the, the initiative projects and other types of fundings that we have to work on this um, because it requires quite a, a lot of complementary efforts. So let me just give you some uh, uh, indication of, of these uh, data, these collections that uh, we have and that we have been working on and that we use as sort of a, our research platform to do a lot of work. Uh, Freesound is the first one and maybe is the, well, it's the, our oldest uh, initiatives in, in, uh, in, in this area. Uh, we started uh, Freesound uh, uh, close to 10 years ago, no, more than 10 years ago. We celebrated uh, in April uh, 10 years. And um, we started it uh, for the problem of having access to uh, audio content that we could use for research and also that could be used for other applications, uh, mainly for artistic type of applications. Uh, many musicians want to access uh, audio for their creations and all the copyright issues that are around the music uh, makes it really, really hard for anyone to reuse any content. So the idea was, uh, that was the beginning of the Creative Commons uh, type of movement. So it was the, the, the right time to start an initiative to gather uh, user-generated content uh, at the audio level, not at the music level, because this is still a complete nightmare, but at the sort of sound snippets type of level, which is material very much relevant for a lot of tasks and, uh, and creative applications. There was uh, no big initiative, so we started that, and it has been really successful. I mean, in, in these uh, 10 years, uh, Freesound has continually uh, growing. Uh, there are many millions of users. Uh, there are maybe like more than 4 million registered users. Um, there are, uh, right now, there is uh, around more than 300,000 uh, audio samples. But especially there is a, a good community of, uh, I would say, uh, quite a few of them are experts, let's say, 
that uh, um, record sounds, uh, put the sounds there, uh, label them correctly, because a big effort of it has been, we have to try to get as good uh, uh, information as possible to start from, because otherwise all the machine learning and all the analysis will not uh, do miracles. So let's try to get as much from the community and from a crowdsource type of approach, uh, as much uh, quality as possible. And then we can try to build on top of that to get it better. So we force users to put adequate tags. There is some moderation that uh, uh, sort of controls that. And there is some community. Uh, so it's, this is moderated by, the, by people from the community. And they're, they are really good. And they are really good at, um, uh, at making sure that the content is as good as possible. So by now, I think it's, a, it's an excellent resource, both for research, but also for uh, practical uh, applications, artistic applications, musical applications. And in fact, we have these uh, free sound labs, which is a, uh, it's like a, a forum uh, um, that uh, we develop in which we maintain what we know about what has been used free sound for. So, so, for example, there is uh, all the articles that have been using this, uh, this uh, corpus uh, for some research. There is uh, some, all the, the, the different aspects of uh, educational initiatives that have been uh, done using that and some apps uh, or some uh, even commercial applications that have been built on top of that. So anyway, so that's a good resource that we maintain from here and uh, we, I, I think, with not that much resources, uh, we have been able to uh, become a, a very relevant uh, um, a sort of uh, infrastructure that uh, serves uh, a lot of people. But there is much more to do, and, uh, and there is much more to do for, at all levels, and especially to improve, as, uh, as the project is, the, the structuring. If you search for these sounds, uh, the truth is that you will get access to a tiny percentage of the sounds that could be relevant. And this is because the tags may not be right, or people have not added the right uh, uh, labels to that. Uh, and there is a lot of issues that uh, we have had a number of PhD theses addressing different aspects of the limitations or the, 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 to improve uh, developing automatical tools to uh, pr promote uh, the, the, the facilitating the accessibility of the sound by doing, of course, content analysis and doing a feature analysis, automatic search based on audio content, uh, being able to do a, a sort of tag analysis and tag recommendation for facilitating tagging. And uh, well, there has been quite a number of uh, research projects based on that. Um, in music, uh, so this is a, a database of audio snippets, and very clearly we don't claim that uh, there may be some music fragments, but there is no uh, compositions, let's say. Uh, compositions uh, have a, a completely different set of uh, rules, a different set of uh, concepts that um, are required to organize it. And, um, and to have a, a, a repository or a, a, a corpus of uh, music uh, accessible to the research community, that's impossible. There is no way uh, no one would uh, be ever able to uh, compile an open uh, uh, repository of music for doing research because simply uh, it's all copyright material and uh, the, the music labels uh, have not uh, moved uh, uh, an inch since the, the times of the standard copyright uh, legislation. So it makes it really, really difficult even to share it in a one-to-one -one basis. I mean, I, I think it's one of the fields in which uh, research, because of copyright issues, uh, is the, the hardest. Uh, because of traditional, there has been a lot of money made by, uh, by labels, by, by record labels, so it's understandable, so they don't want to uh, give out that, uh, that privilege and that uh, business models that they have. So what uh, has been our alternative? Well, our alternative has been Acoustic Brains, uh, which I think is a kind of a, a smart way to get around this issue, which is uh, we don't have the audio because 
it's, uh, it's private, it's uh, owned by the labels and people have private collections of music. So we don't have the, the audio of the users, but we have the analysis of that audio. And uh, if you talk with the labels, they would say it would be legal, but uh, there has not been a single legal case uh, preventing us from uh, doing that. So it's, uh, no one has win a case saying that uh, having uh, audio features of an audio signal is an illegal kind of thing. In fact, even if you ask the audio labels, they, they would say even to have the metadata of a, of a CD is also illegal because it's, they own the, 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 the names of the, the, the CD uh, cover. But again, they haven't been able to enforce that in any, in any case that I, that I know. So anyway, so the current solution is we have the analysis of audio recordings in a way that is uh, adequate for carrying out a lot of research. Uh, so most of the research uh, currently in information retrieval, they start from audio features extracted from the audio plus information about the recordings, editorial metadata, and you do something about that. So uh, there is uh, a big initiative for some years that we are collaborating well, uh, with, which is called the Music Brains, which is basically an encyclopedia of music metadata that has millions and millions of uh, tracks uh, with the information of the, um, of the artists, uh, of all the albums, etc. that it has been crowdsourced and there is a very big and active community of people maintaining that. So we have complemented that with the audio analysis material. And we did it in the same way. So we just give uh, a, a, a source code, uh, it's open source, which is this uh, library that we have been developing is Essentia. And uh, we give it, it's available on the website of Acoustic Brains, and people can download it, they can compile it themselves, or they can use uh, existing binaries, and people analyze their personal music collection. And they submit the analysis files, JSON files, of all the analysis data that, of course, we have decided to, that are, is relevant for uh, uh, research. Of course, there can be, uh, uh, many researchers are working precisely on what type of features, so they may not be able to use that. But a, a big percentage of research would, uh, would, would be uh, okay with just starting from this uh, audio feature, especially because it's all open source, so they can see exactly how we compute it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's completely... Uh, uh, traceable exactly what is going on. So amazingly enough, uh, there has been a lot of people doing that for us. So uh, analyzing their personal music collections and uploading the music collection. So there are close to 4 million uh, musical tracks uh, in our server uh, with uh, all, not just the audio analysis, but all the metadata, because the important thing is not just uh, the, the analysis file, but it has all the metadata that comes from Music Brains. And it has an ID system, it's called Music Brains IDs. And so for example, here on top, so this is some of the data associated with a given track. It has the Music Brains IDs, well, you don't see that. And then we have all the analysis data. And even, we can even link it to a YouTube uh, uh, video that you hopefully, the, the matching is not at the ID level, so it's, it's, it's matched based on on, 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 the, on the names, but most of the time even, so you can actually listen to the song from YouTube uh, and it's out there. So anyway, so people upload all this information and then in the platform uh, it's, uh, it's analyzed and, uh, and then people can, can, can use all these, uh, these analysis data. The, the main reason for creating Acoustic Brains though, it was not this one, was to be able to create adequate data sets. So the, as I said, the biggest uh, bottleneck or one of the biggest bottleneck in, in our field is the, the lack of well-labeled data sets for which to do uh, learning. So that means data sets that have labels of the semantic concepts that we want to train with. So that being uh, genre, being instruments, etc. So uh, we are still now in the, in the it's, it's, it's working, but we haven't started uh, uh, creating any challenges and involving the community, uh, but uh, uh, there's a number of people working on that. So we can create data sets 
with, uh, with user-generated uh, labels so that can be used for uh, our classifiers and for, uh, for training. And I think this is going to be a very uh, good way to uh, improve the uh, current state of the art in a number of these things. Because, uh, as I said, there may be, like, acoustic brains is, is, is huge, but again, it doesn't have some of or, or most of the labels that would be needed for a number of the training uh, tasks that we want to do. So this is on top of that, that's why we are starting this idea of uh, labeling. Okay, um, let me just uh, uh, go a little bit quicker. Uh, Essentia is a, a library that we have developed for a number of years on the idea of uh, 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 collecting algorithms that have been the result of uh, a lot of the research we do uh, and making it uh, open source so that people can use and by now I think it has become uh, a standard uh, software library for people working in this field. Uh, it's quite robust, uh, it has been used uh, both commercially and for research for uh, many things. Uh, on the website you can see all the applications and uh, usages uh, that have been used. Uh, so that's a, a very excellent uh, uh, sort of tool on which uh, to, to do things with and test many things. So we definitely are using that. And in GitHub, uh, it's very active. Uh, Dimitri is the main uh, uh, um, software developer and maintaining and getting a lot of feedback from the community, uh, getting uh, comments and how to improve things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, so anyway, so this is the kind of tools that we are building, and of course, within Maria Maestu, we we will be emphasizing even more and making sure that is uh, not just used by us, but by other people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then specifically about what you can do with all these, I, I mentioned two tasks. One is uh, genre classification. Genre classification um, by itself, I don't think is that relevant because uh, the, you would talk with a, a, uh, every person and the concept of a genre is an ill-defined concept and uh, people would uh, not agree on if uh, some specific genres of uh, uh, techno music uh, is one or the other. There's, uh, it's a very cultural uh, uh, and social aspect to that. But anyway, but it's a fundamental uh, concept in which uh, even they may not be a uh, an ontology or a clear taxonomy of genders, but is a, is, is, is a level of, uh, of classification that allows us to do a number of things below that. So once you know a gender, then you can uh, develop uh, tools to analyze aspects, things that are specific for that gender. In fact, that has been one of the major areas of research for us, would be to target a specific music uh, cultures and work on specific uh, analysis for that. But anyway, and within Acoustic Brains, the idea is that you could do this automatically and uh, once you develop data sets, you can do gender classification. But anyway, the idea is how to improve that. If you look at, well, you don't see here, but if you look at the, at the, the success of these uh, classification task is the, the, the accuracies are, are, are quite uh, low. So um, any uh, current state of the art of the genres, especially if they scale even to this size of number of genres, um, uh, we get uh, very uh, low uh, precision and recall uh, for, for that. So we need to uh, get better on that. Um, another task that is much freer and that, that, uh, that is uh, um, in, in quite useful for uh, applying some number of uh, techniques is uh, tagging. Uh, in, uh, in fr this is an example of free sound. Uh, people put tags to sounds, uh, like in images or in anything like this, and there are millions in, uh, of tags. In, uh, um, and of course, the, 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 the goal is to automatically tag things, uh, given that users uh, normally uh, they put a few tags, but uh, they miss many, many tags. So when you put, so I'm sure for any single concept uh, of the whole, all the sounds that could be retrieved with that tag, only you get a few because uh, uh, the, the, there is, uh, they have not been uh, labeled that, uh, that well. So the idea is how to automatically tag uh, sounds uh, uh, with, uh, with the existing tags or with some other. So you can do some learning on the sounds that have a tag and then propagate, uh, do uh, tag propagation to, to other tags. 
Okay, so we have been doing this with a, a number of techniques and typically with this signal processing approach to, to do the feature analysis. We have been using a number of uh, machine learning approaches uh, to do that. And now with, uh, with, um, uh, with uh, Jordi Pons, who is uh, the new PhD student working on, uh, on Maria de Maestu, the idea is to, to start exploring uh, deep learning architectures. Um, so this is uh, the main work that will happen uh, for us. And um, of course, the, the, the biggest problem is that uh, in deep learning, uh, the, the, the success stories come from image, uh, speech, and some other uh, uh, fields. But really, in music, uh, there have not been uh, there has been quite a number of attempts to to uh, apply deep learning. But uh, they, I, I, uh, until now, I think they are not really uh, successful uh, examples of. Uh, succeeding in classifying uh, large uh, uh, data collections. So the idea is to work on that, and we have been trying to, to use uh, different approaches, and especially convolutional neural networks, but the main thing is to try to understand what's going on. You know? So the, the first approach in, 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 in uh, deep neural networks is to use the idea of image, so consider that a sound is an image, and this is a spectrogram, and basically you do image analysis on that. Uh, because that's where uh, the state of the art comes from. And, uh, but clearly that's not adequate in, in music. You have to be able to uh, do a selection of the, 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 the features that you start uh, taking advantage of the knowledge that we have about music. So our first initial uh, work has been, okay, indefinitely in, in music, uh, a square in the spectrogram is not adequate. I mean, the time frequency resolution is something that you have to play around. It's not a single kind of uh, uh, um, compromise that you can just fix. And so the idea is that you have uh, sort of things or aspects of music that are more time dependent and some aspects of music that are more frequency dependent. So you have to uh, at least have some, uh, some uh, feature selection and some initial pre-processing that tries to emphasize some of these uh, uh, specific perceptual or musical concepts, especially given that we have not huge uh, data sets, so there is no way you can al allow for a, a deep neural network to learn everything because we don't have enough data for the system to learn everything. So we need to add a little bit more knowledge at the beginning. Anyway, and, and this uh, was uh, already got a uh, best paper award in, uh, in this uh, workshop that happened uh, last uh, week at uh, CVMI. Um, and the idea was, okay, so not just to blindly do deep learning, but try to understand the architectures and try to see if we can tune and develop architectures that are musically motivated. And that was good. Okay. And then just to conclude, so the, in terms of the, the, the goals of the project uh, is to create and exploit uh, large sound and music collections, uh, as uh, you have seen. And uh, the idea is to uh, develop uh, task-specific uh, audio features uh, for the particular problems that we are uh, focusing on. And uh, we, in the case of deep learning, to explore the specific architectures that can be uh, better used for music. And um, in, in the sense of a particular uh, sort of semantic tagging, this uh, idea of a generic tagging system using deep neural networks can be a, a quite, uh, uh, quite interesting area to, to, to see how uh, it can be, uh, can be applied to. And, and that's all, uh, so thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, I, I just write on time, but uh, if there is a quick question, otherwise we can just start. Any question, comment? Maybe Jordi, did I miss anything? Yeah, go ahead. So you have in mind like, to use the uh, deep neural network to extract features and do some like, uh, feature extraction in order like, to make the, the network to learn? Correct. Yeah, that's the idea. Maybe Jordi can answer that. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, so actually we have summarizations So a part of the deep learning game, game is actually to have some input data and output data and to allow the network to learn from there. So actually would, allow, would learn features from data. And then it's interesting to try these kind of architectures where 
you can actually enforce the network towards learning something that has meaning in music, in a musical sense. So we try these things in order to improve our results, but also to try to understand what's going on there. And this is a bit the story of it. I don't know if I answer. Yeah, so that's an interesting question. So people want to use end-to-end -end learning, so meaning that audio music is essentially audio, and therefore you have the waveform there. It would be great to use directly the waveform, but so far this doesn't work. So people use the spectrograms and try to learn things from there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I guess uh, we should stop here and uh, ask uh, Leo to continue. Do you have it there or you have it there? Yeah, I'll be here. Okay.